Good evening, you are very welcome to Richmond Park for live League of Ireland Monday Night Football as St. Patrick's Athletic host Bohemians in the SSE Artricity League Premier Division. We are heading for a sellout here, huge crowd in, over 1,100 Bohemians fans. We'll have about 3,000 St. Pat's fans. Let's take a check on the teams, beginning with the home side, St. Pat's, and having lost 2-1 to Shelburne here on Friday, St. Pat's boss Tim Clancy has made three alterations to his team. Captain Ian Birmingham returns to the side, while Jay McClelland and Tunde Olabi also start. Billy King and teenagers Dara Burns and Ben McCormack drop to the bench. And as for the away side, Bohemians, two changes for them from their win against Sligo as Ali Coote and Max Murphy come in. Sam Packham is on the bench and Chris Twarda misses out through injury. Former St. Pat's man Rory Feely is also among the subs. Together on the spin will really put themselves in contention for a for European spot. So Sam Kurtz knocks that one forward and this might be one of the reasons why Tunde Olabi is in the team because he's a runner and Kieran Kelly has missed that and Tunde Olabi threw on goal here and it's a fantastic start for St. Pat's in just the fifth minute. Tunde Olabi capitalising on a mistake at the back from former St. Pat's man Kieran Kelly to net his second goal for the club across the far side in front of the SEI, the Shed End Invincibles. A brilliant finish by Olabi and the Saints lead in the derby. Brilliant finish from Olavi. He, he just capitalised on that error, really poor error by Kelly. Got caught, slipped. Um, Tundi did really well to keep his foot. And then James Talbot was slightly out of position. He was a bit, uh, bit, little bit too far, if you can see here. Tundi gets through, gets in the ball, but James is well out of his goal and he just hasn't had enough time to react. I think if he's further back in the goal, he's a better chance of saving that. But a really good finish right in the bottom corner. Serious pace in the ball as well. Coming home initially to Shamrock Rovers and now with their Dublin rivals, Bohemians. And it's Reek Wilson to cross that one in. They drop towards the edge of the box to Ali Coote. It's a decent strike by Coote. And held at the second attempt by Joseph Anang. A couple of balls attackers there. Guy ready to pounce and rebounds. And thankfully for Anang, he was able to gather at the second attempt. Yeah, lucky enough he didn't spill too far away from him. He was able to get up quickly and, and, and get it again. You can just see Ali Coote picking the ball up here on the edge of the box. And all he has in his mind is getting a shot off. Gets a shot off, true body. It's difficult for the keeper, but... Um, he was able to recover the second, the second ball. Like I think all in all, I think he's done a terrific job. He qualified for Europe twice. Probably just didn't get the rub of the green in Europe last year. They lost key players through COVID um, and Greg Bulger through suspension at key times. Looked offside there, but it's not given. It's another brilliant save. save by Anang. Second ball will break and now the flag is up. It's almost like they're waiting for the VAR in England there, Gary, because I thought when the flick-on happened that Dawson the boy was definitely offside, but the linesman on the far side, Derek Egan, took an age to put his flag up. Well, he had a good think about it. Um, if you're, uh, he could be right. If you thought he was offside straight away, um, that, that's the one frustrating thing. Here we go, we'll have a look at it. He's miles off, two yeah. yards offside. Good save by yeah. Lang, will give him good confidence and gets up and gets the second one as well. So that'll do the goalkeeper no harm, but like I said, it was offside. Yes, the ground staff during the week, Gary, were spraying it with liquidized seaweed to make uh, the roots grow, and I also learned to keep the grass green. There you go. You learn something new every day. That's it. And well done to Daniel and Dave, the ground staff here at Richmond. And here's Tunde now, who's already got one this evening, oh. and he's got two. What a goal! Tunde second of the evening just before the break he's running to celebrate with the St. Pat's bench straight over to John Daly and Tim Clancy and just before half time out of almost nothing I'm talking about the ground staff and the seaweed Gary and next of all Tunde with the right foot smashed it across goal his second tonight third of the season and it's Pat's two bows nil that is a terrific strike you know, just when they think it's half time picks up the ball here in the edge box turns nothing in his mind really getting a shot away and what a terrific shot in between the bodies, it's hard to tell if there, when you look at it, you know, could Talbot have done any better? But this is a terrific strike right into the bottom corner. Curtis again into Rob that one and St. Pat's are right on the counter. And Curtis isn't happy with just winning the ball back because he's raced forward ahead of Tunde and it's a cross in towards the box to Owen Doyle. Here he is. Can he find a yard to shoot? Oh, he can. He's got a penalty. Penalty St. Pat's. What a move. Tunde to Sam Curtis. Owen Doyle in the box, Gary, you'll see the replay, but he's been knocked over. Neil Doyle was on the spot, and he's awarded the Saints a penalty. Yeah, it's definitely a penalty, I think. Um, but what about Sam Curtis for the run? Like, Just burst, it, burst into the box, here he is. Takes, taking them on into the box, and then delivers a really good ball into, into Doyle. Great composure from Doyle. 
Owen Doyle has taken the last couple of penalties for St. Pat's, but Tunde was there to grab the ball at the away end here at Richmond Park. He's on a double, and now he's on his hat trick. Tunde Owalabi, what a night for the striker who has scored his first hat trick for St. Pat's. And it's inside 68 minutes as well from the penalty spot, low and hard into the corner, giving James Talbot no chance. Back in the team tonight, and a hat trick for Tunde. I'm just being asked by Neil Doyle to calm down. Bowles just playing it out now themselves. They know they've been beaten here this evening, but oh, what a strike! Great save, Great save by right. Joe Anang. That was 30, probably 30 yards. Jamie Mullins out of his feet, no back lift. Gary just smashed it. Yeah, smashing strike really and moved and dipped. And Ang did really well to keep an eye on it, gets a touch on it. See the ball in here by Dawson Devoy. Nothing in Jamie Mullins' head or need to turn, get the strike away. Moves that ball out of his feet really well. And just the ball down the side to Kieran Kelly, and that will be that. As referee Neil Doyle blows the final whistle. A big, big win for St. Patrick's Athletic and the perfect response for Friday's defeat to Shelburne. The Dublin Derby Dublin weekend has ended in style with a 3-0 victory here over Bohemians. Tunde Oalabi with the hat-trick, a perfect performance for Tunde. Two in the first half, one in the second from the penalty spot. Listen, we've probably rolled our luck a little bit in the first half with Joe and Ang made a few great saves. and um, It's just a completely different performance than we had here three days ago. Um, full of energy, loads of running. Tunde was excellent, got a hat-trick and um, listen, it's a great performance and it's a great result for us.